Good morning, Valley Rook. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Uh, welcome to Valley Rook. Those online, thank welcome. Uh, this is Memorial Day. Woo! Thank you for all of you, one men, all the men and women serving across our country and just serving, hopefully, amongst, amidst all the violence and all the craziness. There's some semblance of peace that they can find. So, with our first song, we hopefully can. S oh, wait, I forgot. Miss Nika, you said you had a story to tell. So, normally my stories are, are not sanctioned, but this one actually is. <laughs> uh, the reason that I wanted to, before this song, say something is because I, I believe that I was given uh, instruction to do so. So, uh, this weekend, Rasan, my son, went after Target to go to a um, graduation party. We didn't know he was going, so I just texted and said, hey, you're off work, where you headed? And he let us know where he was going. And from then on, he's 22, so he goes and does what he does. And I get a uh, FaceTime from him, and we were watching a movie, so I was gonna text him and call him back, and then I just said, well, let me just take it. And I took it, and there he was, face swollen, saliva coming out of his mouth. He was having an allergic reaction. He has a peanut allergy. Ooh. He was 30 minutes away from us. We had no idea exactly where he was. And so he's calling, saying, what do I do? And we're, you know, luckily, as a mommy, one day I said, put this in your glove box, his EpiPen. Yeah. And so he went, got the EpiPen, and his friends went to drive him to the closest hospital. Well, he was asking where to go, and so my husband got online, because we didn't know where he was in Maryland, and he sent him to the closest hospital, and was, Chris took all of two seconds and got dressed and was headed to that, that space. He gets there, so you would think the story is that he made it, right, he made it to the hospital, amen. And he gets there, now let me tell you, when I saw the Google, for this hospital, it had 1.2 stars, 1.2. So you could imagine as a mother, where have we sent this baby? 1.2 stars, I'll just say that again, 1.2. And so now Chris is on the highway driving in, so now I have created a scenario in my mind of what could potentially happen. And so, find out he gets checked in, all of the things that needed to happen as far as getting him in happened. And then later on, I get a, a text from my husband that I didn't see right away, and he calls me and he said, did you get my text? And I said, no, I, I missed it. What, what, is, what is going on? He said, do you want to know how good God is? Uh. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, guess who his nurse is? So the first thing I said was grace. <laughs> <laughs> No babies. I said, no Grace babies. must be his nurse. <laughs> and he said, no. He said, Valerie. And I said, Valerie? Valerie, 10 years ago, was my boss when I worked at Lifetime Fitness. When I was getting a divorce, Valerie gave me a job because I said, I'm going to need to get a full-time job because I'm, I'm getting a divorce. So Valerie has known Rasan since he was five years old. Look at God. Mm. Look at God. The last time I talked to Valerie was in person 10 years ago. I haven't seen Valerie. She saw his name and said, oh, I know him. Saw Chris and said, you don't remember me, but I used to work with your wife. And when I saw Rasan Malik Foster, I knew there could only be one. <laughs> I said, well, she definitely knows him because there is only one. So this story is only to say to you that God is everywhere. Yes, yes. He yes. sees everything yes. all the time. He put people in place that we didn't even know was there. We had no idea. It was a random 1.2 hospital. <laughs> And she was his nurse. It wasn't that she was just on the floor. She was his nurse that evening. Mm. What a mighty, yeah. mighty, yeah. mighty God yeah. we serve. Yeah. 
He's at home with medicine, watching TV, doing whatever he was doing two days ago. But Friday night, he did not have to be here. And God carried him. He got him there. Then he gave him someone we know. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, stand to your feet, y'all. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. So today is a celebration. That's what we open up with this morning. Put your hands together. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let angels, Let angels bow before Him. Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. Mighty. What a mighty God we serve. Let's say it again. What a mighty. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. What a mighty God we serve. Let angels bow. Let angels
everything to me. Everything to me. Everything to me, everything to me, life and breath, life and breath. You're everything to me, everything to You're me. You're my peace, You're my peace. You're everything to me, everything to me. Joy and sorrow, joy and sorrow. Everything to me, everything to me, hope for tomorrow, hope for tomorrow, you're everything to me, and call him master, master, call him savior, savior, he is my ruler, ruler, he's a redeemer, Redeemer, he's the shelter from the storm. Shelter, shelter. When money is in too tight, use provider. Provider, he is my deliverer. Deliverer. Whenever you get sick, he's your healer. Healer. Whenever you just need a word, he's your father. Father. He's my Father, Lord, you are my Father. Father, one more time, let's say Savior, Savior, and let's call on His name. Let's say Jesus, Jesus, the Lord Almighty, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, Your name is above all names. Jesus, what's His name? What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? What's his name? Jesus. Whenever I need you, I just need to call on Jesus. Whenever I'm sick, whenever I'm broke, I just call Jesus. on Jesus. 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 Just keep calling his name. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I need you to call on me, Jesus. Jesus. Tell me what you need me to do, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Your name is above all names, Lord, I bow before the King, 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 before the king. sing with me, say. I bow before the King. I bow before the King. I bow before the King. Lord, I bow before You. I bow before the King. You and only You. I bow before the King. 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 Good morning, and welcome to Valley Brooks Communion Sunday Service. We want to give a special welcome 
to all our first time viewers and visitors. We are so very happy that you have chosen to worship with us here at Valley Brook. Those at home may click on the link below to access our first time visitor card. Please take a few minutes to complete it to help us pray for you as well as to notify you of future Valley Brook events. You may also find this form on our streaming page after the service, streaming the Sunday service. We have three options for viewing our Sunday service virtually. You can go to the website and click onto the streaming tab. You can connect directly to the stream via vbccstream.com or you can go to our Facebook page at VBCC online to connect. Praise reports, prayer requests, and sick and shut-in reports. If you have information about a member who has become ill, or if you would like others to pray for you, please complete a prayer request e-card located under the pastor's corner tab or on the streaming tab on our website, and we will be happy to lift you up. Also join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. for our Power Hour of Prayer, which will be held via Zoom. Continuing in May, we will focus, we did focus on two ministries per month for prayer. Anyone who is part of the featured ministry or supportive of it was invited to join us. On May 8th, the senior ministry was featured and the worship ministry was featured on May 22nd. Please see today's bulletin for more information. Access to our bulletin. Please reference this morning's bulletin for a scripture reading and more complete information about the Valley Brook happenings. You may access the bulletin by clicking on the streaming tab and click on the link labeled virtual bulletin. <clears throat> cameras. There are two video cameras in the sanctuary one of which is occasionally used to catch the reactions of the congregation to help make the stream experience more interactive for the viewers. For those individuals who cannot be seen on camera, there is a designated section in the rear of the left side, window side of the sanctuary, with chairs marked as reserved. The video technicians have been instructed not to show that section in the stream. Audio Visual Ministry. The Valley Brook Audio Visual Ministry is actively seeking volunteers to join the team. You can work either, video, either audio, video, or both sides, like some members already do. Training will be provided. Please see Brother Marlo Barnes if you are interested or you can call or text him at the number provided in today's bulletin. Offering. Your gratitude to the Lord, expressed in your generous contributions, continues to make our ministry operations possible. For your convenience, we ask everyone present to take an offering envelope from either your bulletin or the pocket inside of the chair in front of you. Label it with one or more of the choices provided and place it in the collection basket. You may also see today's bulletin for ways to donate online. Remember that everyone, every man, every woman, and every child has something to give, including those who cannot give financially. And now, if you could please take a few minutes to fill out your envelopes, and after which, Brian Cheeseboro will give us today's scripture reading and offertory prayer. God. 
immovable rock, omnipotent, powerful, awesome Lord. Victorious warrior, commanding king of kings, mighty conqueror, and the only time, the only time I ever saw him run was when he ran. Good morning. Good morning. So um, I, uh, I wasn't going to share this, but um, since uh, uh, Anika blessed us with such a great testimony, um, I've got one I want to try to share really, really quick. Uh, so a few days ago, I think it was Wednesday, I was uh, on my way home, and I was going through Silver Spring, and it's really busy traffic down there, and I was trying to make a left onto Colesville Road. And, um, I was on the side street, and I saw the traffic coming this way and that way, and I knew it was immediately a situation where I've got to just gun it to get out to make that left. So um, I'm all ready. I see the traffic. It kind of stops. This traffic, I know what's going on over there, and I'm ready to just pretty much floor it out there. So I'm looking this way, and then I turn, and a guy on a bicycle zips right in front of me. If I'd gone out the way I'd planned to, I, I might have hit him and maybe even killed him. And um, I know, Pastor, like you've talked about the foreseeable future, that one was not foreseeable. <laughs> so uh, I just thank God for being in control of that. Um, but with this scripture, um, I was thinking about a couple things. People talk about climate change. People also talk about uh, the United States and, and the situation that we're in, uh, just the, the political polarization or whatever. And thinking about, um, well, what if uh, this world falls apart. What if this country falls apart? You know, but reading this psalm just really, really helps to comfort me. So, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her to break, um, at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for every day being in control. No matter what goes on, um, you are in control. Your hand is on the wheel. Thank you, Lord, for being in control of, of, of my car the other day and that bicycle. Um, and just thank you, Lord, 
that even when it seems uh, things are very dark, things are just, how do we get out of this? How did we get into this? You are still in control. And, and, and thank you for that, because I'd certainly hate to see this world if you were not in control. But I know, Lord, that you will always be in control. So we thank you. We praise you um, for all that you are doing in our lives, our, our, that we can share our testimonies with others. In Jesus' name, amen. An oldie but goodie. He decided to. He decided to die. Yes, he did. Mm. All right. Yes. That's what. That's the part. That's my song. That's my jam. Mm. <laughs> my jam. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it's Communion Sunday, and uh, you know, it's. I think about. Um, I don't want. I'll be quick. We had a victory. It's a victory supper. Is what he had. Communion, victory supper. Man knows what he knows. We he's winning. He's, we're winning when we're with him. It's a victory. It's a victory, and he's able to make it happen. Amen. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in you, that worketh. In you, yeah. God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. So don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able. Man, he's able. He's able to come on. Everybody, God. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill you. every promise to you. Oh, so don't give up. Don't give up on God. Because he won't. He won't
need that job. He's able. He's able. If you need He's it, able. Help. He's able. He's able. If you need to he's walk able. Out, oh, he's able. He's able. If you need to use a cane, he's able. Man, oh, he's still able. He's, he's able. able. He's 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 able. Whatever you need, don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. I say, don't give up. Don't give up. Because he won't give up on you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because he won't give up on you. 1.5 stars, was it? 1.2. 1.2. 1.2. He is the star. He is the one. That's all you need. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Because he is able. He is able. Yes. He's able to bring the victory. Let's have this victory supper. Amen. 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 Good morning, Valley Brook family. Good morning, Valley Brook celebrities. Yes, you are still celebrities. I haven't called you that in a while, but you are because God is still celebrating you. It tells us in Zephaniah 3 that he rejoices over us with shouts of joy. But we're not smug celebrities. We are servant celebrities because we recognize that God has given us the ability to care for one another with our gifts, our talents, our personalities, our quirkiness, our weirdness, our humor, our sobriety, all things. That God is at work in all of that to bless us and to bless one another. So why don't you all stand up and give each other a warm Valley Brook greeting and remain standing for opening prayer. Oh good God is so good God is so good He's so good to me God is so good God is so good God 
is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning. <clears throat> New mercies I see, all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. With the sanctuary still buzzing, it's a good thing the Lord can hear above the noise because we're going to pray right now. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for blessing us day in and day out, coming and going, waking and sleeping. Thank you, Lord, for your protection. We are here today. Lord, whether we saw the danger as Anika and Chris and Rasan were experiencing, or whether Brian was alerted at the last minute, we thank you, Lord, for your protection, your unseen protection. Indeed, Lord, your word says that the angels are ministering spirits who serve us, those who will inherit salvation, your word says. So we thank you for your covering, and we thank you that we are invincible and indestructible until it is time for us to see you face to face. And then we are forever. So we thank you, Jesus, for your care for us. We thank you, Lord, for the men and women who served our country, and who gave the ultimate sacrifice. We were talking about this in the men's meeting and how their lives, some of them just wiped out in seconds. And the story went on, but their lives ended at that moment. And we thank you, Lord, for where we are as a nation right now, that their sacrifice set us up for where we are right now. And Lord, we thank you that you're at work in what is right now. It looks like it's a mess. We wish it was different. We can't even watch the news for any kind of extended time without feeling just sick to our stomach. But Lord, as you have purposed, so it shall stand. And Lord, you are the sovereign Lord. And we thank you for allowing us to be a part of what you are doing on this earth at this time. You're doing it. You've just called us to be a part of it. So we thank you for the victory that we have in Christ, and we thank you for the ultimate victory that will be ours when you return. Until that time, Lord, we ask that you fill us with your spirit. Fill us up this morning as we look at your word. Fill us with remembrance. Fill us with gratitude as we remember you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Today is Communion Sunday, and we are also concluding our series on the world of work. And I want to begin this morning a little bit differently. I want to begin with a piece that was written by Brother Mark Allen, Elder Jim, and Miss Evelyn's son. And he shared it with me after last week's message. He said, can we talk? We went back to my office and we sat down. We talked for a while about the message and has, how it relates to his own situation. And so he read this, he shared this with me and I asked for his permission to share it with you all because I think it's a masterpiece of self-analysis and self-reflection, and I think that it will be relevant to some of us in this room, 
And he wrote this as it relates to some of the turbulence that he's feeling in his work world. Now, he didn't write this for public consumption. He wrote it for himself during one of his meditation times, and he just happened to read it to me. I thought about it for a, a half a day, and I called him up, and I said, Can, would you mind if I shared that? And he said, oh, no, of course not. Go ahead. He said, that's my testimony. So I want to start off this morning's message by reading what, uh, what he wrote. And uh, it, it's amazing. But he's sitting and he's reflecting. And he writes these words, you've got the things you always wanted, a beautiful, sweet woman that loves you. You have a family that loves you and is doing well physically, emotionally, and financially. Your daughters are on their adult journey. You've done an amazing job getting them on their way. You've modeled how you seek the Lord in challenges and triumphs in a non-intimidating manner. They've seen grace in your failures and humility in outward successes. Your new family and friends treasure you as a patriarch that provides consultation, resources, and laughter, and they show their love with respect and vulnerability. Your friendships are few but deep, and your drama is limited. You have the materials that you always dreamed of as a young man. You have a beautiful dream home, and you've seen what a lot of money feels like. Most importantly, you've realized through experience that those things didn't bring you peace. And you've used that reality as a platform to consult, advise, and teach younger folks. It's all here, and you're devaluing it seeking external confirmation of the skills that you've amassed over a lifetime. There has to be ways to show and enjoy those skills without stressing yourself out, gaining acceptance from people you don't know and that don't care about you. They treat you like a transaction, yet you treat them like relationships. Now, either is fine if you realize the truth and adjust expectations accordingly. But if you don't watch yourself, you could spend the next 20 years seeking external confirmation, incremental wealth, and other things you think you want, and it will be too late to enjoy any of them because your health could be challenged. The goal is to figure out the best way to seek external and internal balance that's enriching versus stressful. And most importantly, no matter what JK said, valuation isn't just driven by converting accomplishments and outcomes into cash flow models. <laughs> it's actually driven by the joy of knowing I maximized every bit of my beautiful, funny-shaped, perishable tomato In a manner, in a manner that has prepared me to look forward to meeting up with those that left before me and hopefully those that will eventually join me at my father's house. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. And thank you, Mark, for allowing me to share that. Now, I would like to say that all of that was inspired by last week's message, but alas, my only contribution was the tomato. <laughs> which I used as a metaphor for our bodies that start off green and firm, and then they get ripe, and then they get wrinkly, and then they get moldy. Contrasting that with our eternal bodies, our glorified bodies that are in store for us. But many of us can relate to some of the specifics that Mark writes and uh, that he shared with us. But it's not important to grasp it all. Here's what's important. What's most important is this. The conclusion of the matter as he, as he laid it out. The, con con the conclusion being valuation. Valuation, how I appraise my life, the value I assign to my life, how I assess my life. 
How I appraise my life is not by the financial bottom line, but by the joy of knowing that I lived my life in a manner that has prepared me to look forward to meeting up with other believers in our Father's house. Which means this, I want to live my life, I want to grow in my understanding, and I want to grow in my grasp of the eternal value, the eternal value that I have as an individual, and of the eternal treasures that are mine and that can never be taken away from me. In other words, I want to build my house on the rock and not on the, sift, the, the shifting sands of people's evaluation and of changeable things. What is the key to living life in that manner? What is the key to living life in that manner? Our text this morning is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3. And we're looking at verses 16 through 21. Today's message is titled, The Seven Wonders of the Cross. The Seven Wonders of the Cross. And our text is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. Paul, writing to the Ephesians, says, I'm praying for you guys, and I want you to know what I'm praying for you. And just parenthetically speaking, you know, sometimes it's good to tell people not just that you're praying for them. Sometimes it's good to tell them what you're praying for them because that will bring additional encouragement to their hearts, as Paul does here with the Ephesians. He says, I'm praying for you, and he says in verse 16 of chapter 3, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love, to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the full measure, the measure of all the fullness of God. And now to him who is able, who is able. Thank you, James. He's able to do immeasurably or exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. If you are taking notes, the main idea that I want to convey this morning from this text, drawing from Mark's meditation, from the scriptures here, the main idea is this. Jesus wants us to know. Paul is praying, I want you guys to know something. And I want you to know it more than intellectually. The words that he chooses, as you will see when I share the amplified version of this, suggests that Paul wanted them to not just kind of know it in their head and yawn at it. He wanted them to know it more than just as an intellectual concept or as a theological principle. He says, I want you to know something, but I want you to know it deep inside your inner being. I want you to know it beyond your flesh and beyond your sinew and directly in your spirit. I want you to know something. And I can't make you see it. And I can't explain it to you. And I can't make you understand it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray that God gives you power to understand this. I'm going to ask for God to do a supernatural thing in you that makes this real for you. 
I don't want you to just know it. I want it to be real for you. So I'm going to pray this. So when I read it, we said, I've heard that verse before. I've heard that passage before. We say, amen. And if Paul was here, he said, that ain't good enough. That ain't good enough. Let me go to my knees and pray and ask that you internalize this in a way that it is as real to you as your reflection in the mirror, that it is as real to you as the seat that you're sitting in, the food you're going to eat later on, the game you're going to watch later on, anything tangible or material in this world, I want you to know this just like that. I want it to be that real. So I'm going to pray that God does this. But it's because, see, it's in knowing this, what Paul is praying, it's in knowing this that we move towards maximizing our lives. I don't care how many seminars you go to about how to realize your potential. <laughs> I don't care how many motivational speakers you listen to. Trust me, trust God's word, trust Paul's prayer. There is something in this text that if you know it like you know it like you know it, if it is deeply embedded in your soul, it will change your life. And I don't mean just a little. It'll change your orientation to life. It'll change the way you see life, the way you experience life, the things you pray for in life. The stuff you want. You think you want what you want, but there's something else that you want more than what you think you want. And God knows what that is. You see, you know what your cravings are. God knows what your desires are. So he says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Like Brother Mark was saying, you know, it ain't all that other stuff. I know it's not all that stuff because I've had all that stuff. There's something missing. There's something missing. And it's not that he's not a believer. He's a believer. He's a, a, a brother in the Lord. He just needs to be refocused and reminded like we all do. Like we all do. Like we all do. So it's knowing this that, we, that moves us towards maximizing life in this tomato that we've been given for a short time on this earth. And when you give somebody a gift, which is what we're celebrating this morning, this passage is about uh, uh, Paul wanting them to know this gift that God has given, this gift of love that God has given, this gift of grace. When you, want, when, you, when you give somebody a gift, you want them to know the features of the gift, don't you? You want them to know what it does. So you say, see, it's engraved right here. See, right here. See it there? And you say, oh, well, it's got this gold trim, right? This is 18 karat gold right here. Or you say, no, you know, it op see, it opens here like this too, see? You want them to know the features of the gift because you want them to maximally enjoy it. Amen? Amen. And so, so, so God wants us to enjoy the gift that he's given us. He wants us to understand its features. And, then, and you want them to enjoy it. So you, you, want them to hear, you want to hear them say, this is beautiful. And you smile. You want them to say, you know, the, the guy puts it on. You want to hear him say, can't nobody tell me nothing now. You want to hear, I always wanted one of these. How did you know? <laughs> Laverne bought me a knife for, what was that, my, my birthday or anniversary? Something. You don't even remember. <laughs> she buys me all these gifts and uh, Valentine's Day, but it's this little knife with my name on it. I love that knife because I can flick it open, you know? <laughs> so whenever. <laughs> Closest thing I ever had to a switchblade. <laughs> I love that thing. So whenever there's a package that comes to the house and it needs opening, you know, we could stick our thumbs in it and open it. I say, wait a minute, let me get my knife. <laughs> a 
And Laverne has gotten to the point where she'll say, you, you need to get your knife, honey? <laughs> yeah. But it delights her that I am delighted with my knife. In the same way, Paul is praying that you would know this so you would be filled up to all the fullness of God. So that you would be walking around saying, it's beautiful. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I always wanted this. I just didn't know it. It gives the Lord delight when we know and when we delight in his gift of unfathomable love that was paid for on the cross of Calvary all those years ago. He wants us to know what he intentionally paid for for us. He knew all these things were in the box, the things that we're going to look at, these seven wonders. He knew that's what he was paying for with his blood. It's not like it surprised him. You know, when my brother took me on that all-expensive excursion, he knew exactly what he was paying for. And Jesus knew exactly what he was giving us when he died on the cross. There was no surprises. He knew what it was, and he wants us to fully enjoy it and to be appreciative of it and to be filled up with joy and filled up to all the fullness of God, whatever that is. It's a lot. So Paul is praying for these Ephesians to have power from above, to experientially know how much God loves them so they can enjoy it. Here's what the Amplified Version says of that passage. It says, I want you that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge with mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. The Lord doesn't only want us to receive his gift of love or to know it intellectually, he wants us to deeply connect with it in our innermost being. But again, this doesn't happen by our willing it to be so. It doesn't come from our power of reason. It doesn't come from memorizing the words. It's a product of God. So what are these wonders? You've heard of the seven wonders of the world. I said, let's talk about the seven wonders of the cross, the things that we've been given, that God wants us to be filled up to all the fullness of God knowing about, and that will orient our lives so that we are maximizing the years we have on this planet, which are limited, and experiencing life as God intended for you to experience it when he created you. It's in him. The treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. Look everywhere else you want to look, but the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, as far as how this world, uh, how this life is supposed to function, What's going to give you that satisfied completeness, wholeness, fullness? It's understanding this. But here's wonder number one if you're keeping, keeping notes. The gift of Christ that he paid for on the cross gave you this wonder. The first wonder is he gave you, he brought you from death to life. From death to life. It's also called in Titus chapter 3 verse 5, it's called regeneration or rebirth or being brought to life by God's spirit who doesn't just give us new life, but then he takes up residency in us. 
And that is literally the supreme wonder. Everything else, all the other wonders that I'm going to share are based upon this one. Because if you don't have this one, you don't get the others. <laughs> this is the foundation from death to life. This is what communion is about. It's about celebrating being brought to life by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what communion is. We're celebrating the life, the eternal life that God speaks of in John 3.16 and other places. But chapter 2 of Ephesians instructs us that we were all dead at one time. It says we were all dead, which means that we were excluded from the life of God. We were excluded, excluded from union with him. We just didn't know it. We were dead, and we didn't know it. It's kind of like we were hearing about someone. We were hearing about God, but never having met him. It's like people that you hear about, and you've got all kinds of opinions, but you've never really met them personally. That's what it was like. And then by faith, we got, we got to meet him through Christ. Or here's a better way of thinking about it. It's like living inside a house with no doors or windows all your life. And that's all you know. You're living in this house, no doors, no windows. And then one day you're taken outside to Mount Everest. Or you're taken to the Grand Canyon. Or you're taken to the Redwood Forest. Or you're just taken outside on a dark, clear night and you're pointed to the sky and you see all the stars. And all your life you've lived in a house with no doors and no windows. And it doesn't matter how big the house was. And it doesn't matter how much stuff is in the house. And it doesn't matter how comfortably you're living in the house. You're still in a house with no windows and no door. And so your experience of life is confined to what's in the walls of that house. That's what death is. That's what death is. You can be walking around and doing all this stuff, but you're in a house with no doors and no windows. And then Jesus comes along, and by faith in him, he makes windows. He makes a door. In fact, he is the door. Yeah. And what happens? <laughs> you walk out and you see a life that you didn't even know existed. And all that you've seen hints that there is so much more than what I see. What else is there? It's the Grand Canyon, but look, I see something way over there. That's the redwood forest. But man, that's, there's got to be more. Wait a minute, what's that over there? An ocean? What's an ocean? <laughs> That's what being brought from death to life is. And the tricky thing is this. You can't explain what outside looks like to somebody who's inside. <laughs> You say, man, there's an ocean out there. And they'll say, what's an ocean? You say, there's a redwood forest. Out. What's a forest? There's a Grand Canyon. What's that? You see, this is a supernatural thing that happens that God and only God can do. If you are in Christ, it's only because God gave you doors and windows. It's only because of him. And that is the gift of eternal life that he's given to each one of us. You know, how do you describe to somebody living in a windowless house and a doorless house what's outside? Entering this new life is different for everybody. For some people, it's dramatic. For others, it's imperceptible. You don't have to feel it happen in order for it to happen. All you have to know is what caused it to happen. And what causes it to happen is saying yes to Jesus. Yes, Jesus, 
the door comes, the windows appear, and your life will never be the same again. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, he who hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life, does not come into judgment, but has passed out of that windowless, doorless house into life. And everybody who believes gets doors and windows that open to a world of wonder. And as we looked at in Sunday school this morning, the fascination never ends. The Lord continues to fascinate us forward with his wonders in big ways, in small ways, in personal ways. The second wonder is we go from alienation to adoption. We transition from being strangers to being adopted into God's family with all the privileges of sons and daughters. We become heirs and heiresses. Romans 8, 17 tells us we become fellow heirs with Jesus Christ. We receive every spiritual blessing that Christ has. We have eternal life. We get glorified bodies to replace these tomatoes. We get a residence in New Jerusalem, as we've been studying it on Thursday, the beautiful city of God, New Jerusalem, that is just absolutely awesome. Read about it in Revelation 21, Revelation 22. But that is our eternal residence. Right now, we're heirs living in a foreign land as ambassadors for our king and for our coming kingdom. But one day, brothers and sisters, we're going home. One day, we're going home. And we're going home as heirs and heiresses. And in the ages to come, the scripture says, throughout all of eternity, God will be revealing to us what our inheritance is. Throughout all of eternity, you'll be seeing and discovering just how rich you are. Just how rich. And it's going to take all of eternity for you to understand it, to be able to grasp it. So we go from alienation to adoption. The third one is we go from enmity to friendship. From enmity to friendship. In John 15, 4, Jesus says to his disciples, you're my friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And when we put our faith in him as our savior, we're doing exactly what he commanded. What he commanded is to believe in me. Put your faith in the light. The work of God is to believe in the one whom he has sent. If you've done that, you're my friends. You are my friends. And when we put our faith in him, we move from being enemies to becoming forever friends, not sometimey friends, not iffy friends, not here today, gone tomorrow friends. Friend friends. Jesus is not just our Lord. He's not just our Savior. He's all that. How does the song go? I am a friend of God's. That ain't just words. It's scripture. We are his friends. And he is also our friend. And you can talk to a friend. You can talk to a friend, and you can, you can walk with a friend, and you can be nonsensical with a friend. You don't have to always make sense when you're talking to a friend. And you can be silent with a friend, and, and a friend is a precious gift. As Doc Holliday said in the movie Tombstone, they said, Doc, what you doing out there? He said, Wyatt Earp is my friend. Well, heck, I got lots of friends, Doc. He said, I don't. I don't. He got one. You don't get a whole lot of friends. As Mark said, my friends are few, but my relationships are deep. Jesus is a friend, and we get friendship with him. That's one of the wonders of the cross, that God would want to be friends with us. He does. He wants to walk with us and talk with us. 
and tell us that we are his own. He wants to do that. Can you believe it? I mean, he's not just doing it because he has to. He's doing it because he wants to. Because you're my friend. You're my friend, Terry. You're my friend, James. You're my friend, Edna. You're my friend. He's saying that to you. You can read it. Number four, we go from exclusion to inclusion. Ephesians 2, verses 12 through 13 says this, Remember that at one time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. You were without hope, you were without God, and you were in the world. And that's terrible. Without hope, without God, in the world. Not a nice situation. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. Communion. Celebrating. The gift that was accomplished at the cross. You've been brought near by the blood of Christ. There is neither... Galatians 3.28 tells us, There is neither Jew, nor Greek, nor slave, nor free, nor male, nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Christ's gift in this polarizing world that we live in right now, where you're either in agreement with me or you can go to wherever you want to go. Christ's gift is for everyone who believes. His gift, when he is in control, it will erase all toxic otherness. There won't be any of that. Welcoming all into his kingdom. And we've been invited to see that work. Exclusion to inclusion. And number five, from darkness to light. 1 Peter 2.9 says he called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. You know, darkness, I love the metaphor of darkness. It is such a graphic picture of life before Christ. Darkness. Imagine being in a cluttered attic. And it's completely dark. And you're trying to find your way around, and there's stuff everywhere. And you don't even know what you're stumbling over. <laughs> you don't even know what it is. You can't even identify it. But you keep falling down, tripping over it, hurting yourself, gra grappling for trying to figure something out, grasping, feeling your way like this but still stumbling. And then Jesus turns the light on. And we see what we've been stumbling over. We see it. Oh, that's what that thing was. <laughs> that's how it is. You see the light. And we, 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 move into the radiant light of his truth. We see the path of truth. We see the path of truth. And we recognize the path of error. We recognize it. We see it now. Oh, no, we don't always walk it, but we see it, right? We don't always walk it. Sometimes we kind of want to go back into that attic and <laughs> you know, there's stuff in the attic that I kind of want to, it was kind of fun stumbling over that thing. <laughs> but he, but you know what? Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. You belong to him now, remember? You belong to him. And he's a forever friend, remember? He's not the kind of friend that's going to say, you ain't my friend no more because you went back in that attic. 
<laughs> Darkness to light. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm going back in the attic. Grab me a couple things. Sat down in there for a minute. But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You said, you know what? You don't belong in the attic anymore, man. What you doing up in here? You don't belong up in here. <laughs> You just don't know that you don't belong up in here yet. But that's all right. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to keep on teaching you. And you know what's going to happen? That little thing you keep going up in the attic for, after a while, it's going to lose its charm. After a while, it ain't going to be the same thrill that it was. And you know what? Years later, you may go back up in there again. But guess what? It still hasn't changed because there's no life in that. And you've tasted life. And once you've tasted life, you know what death tastes like. <laughs> and you don't want death. You know what life tastes like. Because you've been given to drink of the stream of living water. And you know the difference between fresh water and dirty water. <laughs> Darkness to light. From oppression to freedom, number six. From oppression to freedom. It says in Galatians 5, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. What does that mean? It means free to experience a life that is being transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, when it says that we've been freed from sin, sometimes that's confusing. Because you say, well, if I've been freed from sin, why do I sin? If I'm freed from it, why do I do it? Well, the scripture doesn't say that you're going to be free from the presence of sin in this life. Sin will no longer be your master. You have another master. Sin can keep on tempting and calling to you, but you got a different master now. Before, sin was your master. It was the only master you had. But now you're free to hear another master. You're here and you've been free to be transformed day by day by his work in your life as he conforms you more and more to the image of Jesus Christ to which you have been predestined. That's what it means to be free. One day we will be free from the presence of sin from the temptation of sin that acts on our flesh one day. But that day is not today. But we have a different master, a different master. We have a new orientation to want to learn and to want to internalize the things of God. That's why you're sitting here this morning. You have a new orientation. That has come from the Holy Spirit. Freedom is an ongoing project. <laughs> it ain't a once, you know, an instant poof. It's an ongoing project. So don't be frustrated, brothers and sisters. Don't be frustrated or discouraged by what you are not. Don't be frustrated or discouraged by what you are not. Be thankful for what you aspire to be. Because that aspiration is from God. Because there was a time <laughs> in your life when you didn't care what you were like. You didn't even have enough sight to see that, what you were, that the wrong that you were all caught up in was wrong. The fact that you even desire something different says that you've been given a way of thinking that you didn't have before. You've been given an orientation that you didn't have before. You've been given a compass that you didn't have before. And his name, his name is the Holy Spirit through the grace of Jesus Christ. And the Lord's going to continue. He's going to continue to coach us to greater freedom. 
The scripture says he's at work in you, in you until the day of Christ. He won't give up on you. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion until the day of Christ. And finally, the seventh wonder from separation to oneness. To oneness. In John 17, 23, Jesus says these amazing words. He says, I in them, hear this now, because <laughs> this is mind-blowing. Hear me. I in them, and you, Father, in me, so that they may be brought to, they may be brought to complete unity. Christ invited us into his life. The scripture says, you, Teddy, were called into fellowship with Jesus Christ. This is what it says. You know, you've heard me say it before, that sometimes we say, I invited Christ into my life. That's not exactly what happened. No. You didn't have a life to invite him into. Remember, you were dead, right? So you didn't have a life. So you couldn't invite him into your life because you were dead. So what happened is he invited you into his life. He called you into fellowship with him. The life that he had enjoyed with the Father and with the Spirit from all of eternity. That wonderful unity of love with the three-in-one God. He invited us to be a part of that. He called Michael in and he called Laverne in and he said, I want them to be one with us and, and I want them to be one with one another. I want them to enjoy fellowship with one another. I want them to be able to get together, Father, until that day when they come home. I want them to be able to get together and experience me amongst themselves. And I want my Holy Spirit to be the one orchestrating this thing. So when they have Bible study at Valley Brook, when they have Sunday school at Valley Brook, and they start talking about their individual journeys with Christ, I want them to be excited about that and be able to say, yeah, I know that. I've been there. He did that for me too. Won't he do it? We, I want him to be able to celebrate with one another. I and them, you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. He unites us with himself and with fellow believers, creating this beautiful tapestry of unity. And Jesus paid for all of it. He paid for every single one of these wonders with his blood. That's why he died. And he knew he was doing it. He wasn't just being executed. He wasn't just paying for us to have a pardon. He wasn't just paying for the forgiveness of our sins. Yes, indeed. That is at the heart of it because it was only through our forgiveness that we were eligible for this new relationship with God. But these are all the other features that he had in mind when he died on that cross. And like the song says, he did not come down. That song, yes, that's why he did not come down because he wanted to pay the price necessary for us to be able to enjoy the gift of life that he was giving us through his blood. So we could say, isn't it beautiful? Yes. And I'm done. Amen. We're gonna take some time for communion now. Are you guys doing a song right now or what? what's up? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to ask Sister Grace, Elder Grace, if you wouldn't mind coming up here and thanking the Lord for the bread. And uh, Sister Laverne, or Brother Michael, if you wouldn't mind coming up and thanking the Lord for the cup.
Are you guys going to sing first? Uh, no, you guys. Communion first. Sing first. Okay. They're going to sing first.
You can prepare your communion packet, open it. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Well, Chris, you go for this. Hello? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? All right. Lord, we do thank you for the bread. Um, thank you that I'm so old now I have to have somebody else open the bread for me during communion. But thank you there is somebody there that can open it for mm -hmm. me. So uh, it helps me to remember this life, how long I've lived this life. Uh, thank you for the bread. Thank you that your body was given up for me on my behalf. You gave it for me. You pursued me. You, uh, you ran me down. You wore me out. <laughs> I had no more energy to resist you. And I gave in. So thank you for that. Thank you for Pastor reminding us of that this morning that life, death was converted to life. So we take this bread together. We all in communion as a group take this bread in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Lord, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to remember, Lord. Lord, thank you, too, for the account that's written of you, Lord, that you uh, resolutely set yourself to go to Jerusalem. Thank you, Jesus. One verse said you set your face mm -hmm. to go to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. knowing all that you were going to encounter there. You, <sighs> nothing could deter you from still going there. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we can rejoice, Lord, in our adoption today because you resolutely set yourself to go. We can rejoice in our freedom. And Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we can, you saw that you had to go. Thank you, Lord, for going for us today. We rejoice, Lord, and thank you for going all the way. The song says all the way to Calvary. He thank went you, for me. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord thank Jesus, you, Jesus, for the cleansing blood, the shedding of your blood that has removed every stain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that when we go in that attic now, <laughs> the clothes don't fit anymore. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you so much for all that you did today. Lord, we worship you in Jesus. He saw the best 
in all of us. Amen. 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 And that's why we love him. Mm. Yeah. Because he first loved us. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Because he's all in. to our website later on and download the uh, sermon notes for today. Just attach this song mm -hmm. to them because what a perfect way to summarize the message today that, uh, boy, 
You know, you can just read the lyrics and say, thank you, Jesus. So let's thank him. Lord, we thank you for first loving us. Lord, it's only because of your grace, only because of your grace. Lord, one day when we see you face to face, our only plea will be that your blood was shed for us. That's it. Lord, we don't have anything more to offer except to say it's your blood. Your blood is the only reason we can expect good and faithful servant well done. It's because of your blood. And Lord, it is because of your blood that we know that we have your eternal favor. It's our only claim. And so we thank you for it. We ask, Lord, that by the power of your spirit this week, that you continue to do that work of helping us to realize, to know, so that we might be filled up to all the fullness of God, the experiential knowledge of Christ's love. We thank you that this is your work, and you're already doing it, and we thank you for your continued commitment to making it real in our lives. And now may the grace of God and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with each of us now and forever. Let us all say amen. 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 God bless you all. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how. How I love Jesus. Let's up a little bit. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Love.